Hello, my name is Stan Gibbs. I'm the program manager for Artworks Downtown. Artworks Downtown is a nonprofit art center founded in 1996, located in downtown San Rafael, California, amidst the downtown San Rafael Arts District. We are a nonprofit art center that operates a pre 1900s building featuring four galleries, 27 art studios, four commercial tenants, a ceramic center. Jewelers Guild, frame shop, restaurant, and so much more. Our art center provides a second Friday art walk for the downtown San Rafael. We are a community driver in that we collaborate with many different organizations, including the City of San Rafael, Downtown San Rafael Arts District, and wonderful organizations such as Gallery Route One, which brings us here today. Today, we are featuring the artwork of the studio artists in Artworks Downtown, which is one of our major programs. Uh, our art studios feature a variety of artists, from conceptual artists to traditional landscape painters, ceramic center, um, mixed media artists, uh, printmakers, and uh, anything you can probably imagine. Uh, we have a group studio from Cedars in the space. Our studios are open to the public to visit. You can see artists at work, and you can also meet the artists. We're currently open Wednesday through Saturdays, noon to 6 p.m. While Artworks Downtown always invites guests to see artists in their studios at work, we're all thrilled to offer the opportunity to see those same artists in an actual gallery setting together as a united exhibit. And we are excited to offer that here at Gallery Route 1. And we thank Gallery Route 1 for this opportunity. So please visit Gallery Route 1 through March 17th to see the AWD Studio Artists in Exhibition.
Hello, my name is Jenny Lynn Hall. Z Morvitz and I co-direct the Visiting Artists Program here at Gallery One. We choose artists who are doing work in with three specific themes, the environment, social justice, and immigration. Project Space is the name of the gallery that we show in here at Gallery One, and it was started by Mary Eubank after the Valdez oil spill. And she really felt like there was a need to show artists working with the environment in a, in a space where installation was welcome as a way to give them a space to show and to educate people about issues that are important to our times. With Valerie Winslow, we're introducing a new theme. She's the first artist that we're gonna have here that deals with domestic violence as a human rights issue. Amnesty International has long recognized that domestic violence happens in every single country in the world. Victims of domestic violence can apply to be get aid as a human rights issue, even if their countries do not recognize domestic violence as a crime. The theme of domestic violence is just important to, for everyone to be aware of because it's about people living with secrets. It's psychological and physical abuse that people have to bear and can't always talk about. It affects how they interact with their environment, with their peers, and within society. It's all around us, even though we might not even know it. Valerie's work gives us the opportunity to feel what this is like. She's one of the most skilled artists we've ever had here. She studied anatomy for decades, and to have her describe these themes in such a controlled, polished manner, I think just adds to the psychological impact of these pieces. Please welcome Valerie Winslow to talk about her work. Hello, my name is Valerie L. Winslow, and I'm here to introduce you to my work at Gallery Route One. The name of my show is Layers of Secrets. I'm a figurative artist. I've been working with a figure for over four decades, and I love to depict the figure through drawing, painting, low relief sculpture, and through anatomy. A few years ago, I started a new series uh, where I wanted to depict uh, various topics of depression, anxiety, child abuse, domestic abuse, and personal loss. And in order for me to do that, I felt it was really important to use my low relief sculptures combined with recycled objects. So let's begin. And as we go through the room, I will talk a little bit more about my work. This first piece is called Isolation. It was one of my first um, artistic pieces for this particular series. Uh, depression to me feels as if I was encased in a re restricted space, uh, completely dark, disconnected from everything around me. The next piece is called Locked Within a Suspension of Time. Uh, depicts a relationship that two people are now feeling separate from each other, can relate. It was really important for me to use recycled objects uh, for two reasons. One, the object could help reinforce the theme being represented and also, I love the idea of taking uh, discarded objects and being able to rechannel them into a work of art and give them a new sense of purpose. The next piece is called uh, Domestic Imprisonment. Again, another theme of a couple that can no longer relate to each other. And sometimes during my own experiences, I felt that I was within a, a prison with someone that was different than who I knew in the beginning. 
The next piece is called House of Secrets. It's really pertaining to my growing up in an abusive home, um, mostly psychological abuse. The stigma of these issues, particularly depression and anxiety, along with child abuse and domestic abuse, still exists today. Uh, many people choose not to seek treatment, fearing a retaliation from their abuser or being judged unfairly by others. That needs to change. The next piece is called Feeling Lost. The next piece is called It's Our Little Secret. Again, another statement regarding child abuse. In my own case, my family was never supportive and I did not ha have the money to seek professional help. So over the years since childhood into my early adulthood, I had to bury a lot of my secrets. And as a result, I accumulated layers and layers of these buried memories and secrets. The next piece is called Entrapment. Some of my personal relationships always seem to entail another person coming in, uh, which was so disheartening because I would feel like um, I was betrayed. The next piece is called Invasion of Privacy. In my house, there was no sense of boundaries. Uh, even when I was in my adulthood, I felt this. In the next piece, we're going to see another statement and it's depicting pulling action, which is how it feels when you're in a relationship, a tug of war between your lover and your partner and, uh, and he or she is choosing someone else. The next piece, is, is called catacombs. Again, this is another reference point to my depression and talking to many people over the, over the years. They felt the same way, that uh, you were entombed during those times when you were feeling extremely depressed and rejected and disconnected. The next piece is called Dark Passage. And the next piece is called uh, The Unexpected Letter and there was so many times when I thought everything was okay and I would get a certain kind of communication back way back then. It was usually a letter form. And uh, being alerted to the fact that my lover was involved with somebody else. The next piece is called Insidiously Being Watched. Again, another statement of lack of boundaries in my 
uh, growing up in my family, always feeling I was being stalked, being watched, every move I made. And this continued into my early adulthood as well. Uh, the next piece is called Grading Memories from the Past. Uh, I just love the shape of that old vintage cheese grater and I thought, well, how can I use it? And I thought, well, put it between two people that are in turmoil, have a heart with nails protruding, uh, the romantic part of the relationship is now over. Uh, it's being shredded. And the outcome are two people that no longer resemble themselves. The next piece is called Secrets Never Told. And a lot of times while I was uh, in childhood, uh, my parents would farm me off to babysitters or military uh, nurseries, which was the predecessor to child care facilities. And in those institutions or at the babysitter's house, I was molested by older boys or older brothers of the babysitter. And I couldn't tell anyone about it. No one believed me. And the next piece is called, Do Not Tell Anyone. Again, another uh, statement regarding the abuse at home as a child. Um, in the, behind the door is a porcelain doll that I dismembered and bounded up against a rack. I was uh, had fragmented memories of being locked into a closet when I was a toddler and uh, I found out through a friend of my family that that indeed happened. The next piece is called Nocturnal Purgatory on the Edge of Time. Another statement uh, regarding depression uh, the only way I could really deal with it when it was severe, when I was in my early 20s, was to escape through sleep. But even through sleep, trying to stop time, trying to stop the pain, uh, the darkness would still overtake me in my dream state. Uh, the next piece is not good enough. A little statement of how words flung at a child in a derogatory way can really damage a self-esteem of that child. And this is looking at it from the point of view of the child by spelling it not good enough. And behind the rocking horse are various little terms that were flung at me which felt like sharp, piercing saw blade or a rotary blade. Uh, the next piece is called the inaudible scream. Uh, actually, um, the full title is uh, Dorothy and the Screaming Popes of Francis Bacon. Uh, this was the last time I saw my mother, Dorothy. Uh, she, it was in a morgue. Uh, I asked to see her. They wheeled her in with a cloth up to her neck. and. Uh, the unusual thing about it is her mouth was forced open and held open with a prod, and uh, it, it just gave her a, a horrifying expression that she was screaming, but I couldn't hear anything. And the last piece here is called Feeling Unhinged During Global Lockdown. It's a statement of how many of us probably felt during an extraordinarily long couple of years. And what was really interesting is I found a lock that actually said the word globe on it, and I wanted to uh, place that on an old world map. And I used a vintage Victorian hinge that is off kilter.
As I was working on the series, I was able to transform many of the feelings that I had felt as a child and a young adult dealing with these issues. Um, as I was transforming them into a symbolic artistic representation, a form of healing was beginning to occur within me. Thank you so much for joining us, and I hope you can come see the work at Gallery Route 1. The dates are February 17th through March 17th. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me here today. My name is Taryn Muller Nickel, and I am the Gallery Route 1 Fellowship recipient for 2024. I am showing my work here in the Annex Gallery, and the title of my exhibition is Counter Shading. Let's take a look. We'll start with this piece first. Um, this is our introductory work to set the tone for the exhibition. I've spent a significant amount of my artistic practice um, exploring and investing in the idea of a narrative. So most of my paintings have had a narrative upon which to rely. Um, and this work here signals a deviation from that. So moving from narrative into um, more you know, formal abstraction, really showing us here that we're going to be seeing a lot of collage, a lot of layering, um, printmaking, paper tearing, lots of mixed media, um, and then of course, a lovely deckled edge, um, and being able to appreciate that even though this is a work on paper, it still has dimensionality to it. All right, let's go inside. In terms of process, this body of work differs greatly from many of the paintings that I've created in the past because I am a maker that is very, very prone to controlling the outcome in all of my works. I can be very exhaustive and pre-plan every single element. So these works give me a substantial break from that. Where I like to begin is collection. So collecting many, many tiny fragments of anatomical references, nature, botany, different di diagrams and drawings, some of which are um, printed matter, some of which are found, some of which I draw or paint myself. I cut these pieces up and take some time to really analyze them, look at them, start to appreciate the finer details. And then I'm able to kind of embark on this very tactile journey where I literally push the pieces around on the sheet of paper. And it's very, very open, very organic. I don't often have a specific outcome in mind, but I do approach it like something of a collaboration between myself and these individual fragments and bits and pieces where together we can come to some final resolution where there is a huge amount of completion. And that's a really exciting moment to get to for me because you know when you found it and there's a very, very clear and satisfying stopping point. For an artist like me who loves to overthink things, having this kind of release and freedom uh, is really fulfilling. Moving on from uh, these two-dimensional collage works on paper, I did decide to experiment here at Gallery Route 1. Um, I took into account the dimensions of the gallery space that I'm working in. I decided to create a site-specific collage. So I brought in different uh, works on paper and um, created the entire exhibition first, and then in this space, I waited to see what the rest of the works in unison were telling me, and then create this um, custom and completely new piece. So what I was responding to in the rest of the show was this idea of not only are these um, paper elements layered and built upon, but I can then take individual works as puzzle pieces themselves and layer them 
overlap them, kind of move them around. The magnets allow me to move things and adjust things in a fairly free way without having to commit in advance. And when I've found the right ending point, it presents itself to me and, you know, I'm able to welcome it. This piece here represents an even further um, step beyond uh, what I what I tend to do most, which is works on paper, works on canvas. So this is a painting on canvas, but in keeping with this idea of decontextualization, I decided to pull the canvas off of the stretcher bar and really experiment with layering by folding the edges of the canvas, having them curl up under themselves, um, and then allowing the actual creases and bends within the fabric to act as line that will then change according to where you view it, where I view the piece. So again, kind of spontaneous and intuitive experiment that is specific to this gallery space in particular. And then moving to this final destination, um, I, you know, took, took again, the space as an opportunity to see, you know, how, how can I align things? How can I reconfigure different elements in such a way that we reach this kind of formal unity, but all the parts are completely disparate. So we have a cluster of individual framed works here. Um, but again, I just allow myself to work on the gallery floor, moving them around and even trying several different layouts on this wall until I felt like there was a unity that came about. Um, but again, each of these pieces, they have their own individual content and can be appreciated um, just by themselves. But I think that they really do bring out these kind of contrasting approaches. So lots of printmaking here, a collection of different fragments of monotypes that I've created over time. Um, these two works are really, really studious, but they are free form in nature. So I'm working from these individual references from different textbooks and photos that I've collected over the years but I don't have a predetermined outcome. So I really allow myself to get lost in the rendering, um, in the high contrast appearance, but then have to respond to what I've created before I can take the next step. Um, so working to completion like that can sometimes pose a bit of a challenge if you get too attached to what you've created, but that's the, um, that's the jumping off point that I think helps the work to retain a bit of energy and vitality is that you're constantly, or I'm constantly having to confront the unknown and then embrace it as an opportunity to take a chance in my work. Thank you so much for joining me.